Hey guys and welcome to part 16 of the Resident Evil 6 playthrough. We are now into the Medical Research Center to catch up with Ada, who is taking out two squadrons of Chris Redfield's men. He, so you can't blame him for he's absolutely pissed right now. <laughs> the one thing about being a soldier, you gotta make sure you check every corner you go to in every, every corner. Oh shit. <laughs> oh, she's a Batman wannabe. <laughs> now, do you recall something like that happened in Leon's campaign? Mm -hmm. Now we're going through that section, but from Chris's perspective. Which really isn't that much different, it's just a different different view point, that's all it is. So it's just basic the strategy we have for <laughs> Leon and Helena, exactly the same here. It's, it's just a race to get to Ada. Because obviously we're going after Ada for a different reason. <laughs> now, if only there was some way that I can actually get um, two of me in this location, and I can so it could be me and Steven against me and Adele on the opposite <laughs> side. <laughs> but no, that's not possible. So there'd be like two of you, Steven, and, and Adele. Adele. <laughs> And then, no, then, then the guests were like, which one's the real Andrew? Yeah. <laughs> oh. it'll, it'll be like that scene from Toy Story 2. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let this imposter fool you. He's been trained by Zerg to mimic my every move. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a glag there. So again, if you beat the other team, the other two companions onto this room, you'll get all the goody stuff. And... I wonder if me and Steven will do that strategy where we actually don't destroy the boxes because they'll help. And uh, looks like we do. Keep your eyes peeled. So this is what you're supposed to do, folks, when you get to this area. Do not destroy the boxes. As tempting as that is. Yeah, because if you remember, this is essentially ice hockey, the What's boss. Right, <laughs> they will help to bounce the enemies away from you. Well, they're not really enemies. They're just more like gadget devices. Mm. They're not C-Virus. They're just tools that Ada's <clears throat> playing with us. I'm not sure what's in those test tubes. They look like more cocoons. You know, with all this cocoon nonsense, you wonder if a Ada's part of the umbrella. <gasps> no. I do wonder. <laughs> Engaging locks. Testing for prototypes. Phantom Ruby prototypes. <laughs> Ada! Oh, it's time for another game of ice hockey. <laughs> <laughs> Same again, I'll get all the hacking stuff out, Steven will take care of the hockey pods. Kind of reminds me of that scene in Dark Knight. What gives you the right between you and me? I'm not wearing hockey pads. <laughs> oh, and then we all know your favourite scene in Donut Justice. Why did you say that name? Because <laughs> I do recall when we saw it in the cinema, you were laughing at that scene. Why did you say that name? It's just like you said, you you can't take something seriously, you just find it laughing. And uh, where's the trigger from uh, The Dark Knight Rises? Uh, <laughs> where's the trigger? Alright, <laughs> with Batman, where Batman sounds like he smoked a fuck ton of yeah. cigarettes. Where is that? I can't speak. <laughs> Boy, these QTs are tedious. <laughs> No, these don't. Do these when you fail QTE, it doesn't take damage, but it makes you delay because you gotta remember you're on a race with Leon and Helena to get the door f open first. So we I managed to beat them, so I got my door unlocked. But that means all the enemies are gonna go haywire for Leon and Helena. Oh shit! Which caused them to be delayed. <clears throat> Hi, Matthew Mercer. Yay! Free goodies. Goodies. <laughs> Or is it, we've got to have money. Cha-ching. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I'll take a few happy pills before we move on. <laughs> Synchronized jumping. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Well, the Russian judge gives you a 3.5. <laughs> Can you imagine the rage that's going at Chris's head right now? Captain, get a hold of yourself. Ah, uh, that's only that's because Steven's trying to shoot her. <laughs> what if she did that and she smacked the camera? <laughs> that could be an outtake. <laughs> I 
kind of runs that. <laughs> I won't. Look, see, Steven's already won that revenge already. <laughs> I know you can't see him. <laughs> you can only see his name. I'm just aiming at the fucking sentry, Helena. Cut her off. I've got her. I want those boots. <laughs> Why does Chris's gun actually have a handle on it? <laughs> In case he just wants to carry it a bit. Oh shit. <clears throat> no, one of it was like a... It's like he carries around it as a suitcase, but when he's in it actually it, tra it transitions into an assault rifle. <laughs> <laughs> Badass fire or not? Yeah. Draw. <laughs> hey, itch. Draw. <laughs> <laughs> Lee oh Leon, you got me again. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Put your gun down, Chris. Is it me or is that like an anime film where they always do that growl thing? Witness. Yeah. <laughs> then again, Capcom is this is made by a Japanese company, so the national security advisor. I lost all my men because of her! And I lost over seventy thousand people, including the president because of No, well, there's the understatement. Which is more better? 10, 15 men and the soldiers, or 70,000 citizens. Yeah, I think you kind of sided with Leon, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, I don't know, considering if you're in... I think you would still feel responsible if you were a soldier leader, and you've just lost, like, two squadrons, which are pretty much 20 men. You've lost them in, like, like that. You would still feel guilty, because it's your job to make sure they're back alive, <clears throat> and you failed them, not to mention their families. Mm-hmm. All it took was for you to tilt to the left and all up. <laughs> no! no. <laughs> Fancy. Wow, he has really. He's got Stormtrooper accuracy. <laughs> well, I guess he's just been blinded, so. Uh, I suppose so, but still. Now, this is something that doesn't make sense. If you recall, actually, when Pierce tried to calm him down, it did nothing. But here, Leon does it, and his rage is turned off like a light switch. <laughs> eh? Considering that this is the first time that Chris and Leon have met. Like, they've commu they communicated to each other for, like, male to keep in contact because they have one thing in common, which is Claire, Chris's sister. But they've never met face to face until now. Now, remember what I said about this is a straight out of Gears of War? Right. Guess what we're doing now? Captain. What's this now? One of us is going to drive the vehicle, and the other is <laughs> going to fire the machine gun on top. It's a car chase. And it's all in first person. This is one of the most tedious moments in the game, actually. Is it? Yeah, because it's one of those where you have a meter, and if that goes down, your car will spontaneously blow up. You have to chase Ada throughout the entire street of Hong Kong. Mind you, that is a fancy car she's got. I wonder how much it cost to. It is perfectly intact. <laughs> so this is what it's like when you're driving the vehicle. You have a small boost there. That green bar is your health, obviously. And all you can do is drive while your partner, who's on the machine gun behind you, can, has to deal with all the other enemy ATVs. And you can't... And these the problem is, is that you can't do drifts while turning. You can only do long turns, which is really bad. And the only time I would say you use the boost is when you're in a straight line. Don't use it when you're turning because you're likely going to hit the wall like you see here right here. Like I'm turning as far as I can and I'm doing long turns. It's because there's no drift where you can sh shift the back wheels. And this is, this is the last bit of chapter 3 actually. Chapter 3 is the longest in Chris's campaign. So there's only three, three chapters in the no, there's five. Uh, there's five per campaign, but chapter three is the longest for Chris. Uh, I see. And like I said, because this game, game of war, games, Gears of War style gameplay is exactly the same game, you'll feel. This is the point where you start to feel bored. Mm. <laughs> now we got you. 
yeah, this is, this is, this is, I think this is what they were trying to do. They were trying to capitalize what they did in RE5, but it doesn't have its charm. It just feels like a completely different game now, doesn't it? Aye. <coughs> Concerning that this is not in the same place where five years later in, in the game's timeline, Resident Evil 7 happens. <laughs> and that's a completely different game altogether. <laughs> And all these Joab will have, the weapons they'll have are either machine guns or rocket launchers. But again, the health goes down depending on the difficulty. So if you're playing this on no hope, or oh, professional mode, good luck. Like I said, only use the boost when you're in a straight line, because if you use it one more time, you're going to hit the, the wall and you're going to... And there's nothing, if Ada goes too far, it causes, it cancels the game over. So when you're in, you have to keep yourself a fair distance with that meters. And yes, you can actually run, you can run over these people who are trying to get away, and you can uh, count, and you'll be destroying their vehicles. Mind you, China, lo China loves all those neon lights, eh? <laughs> if only it was in Tokyo or something. Well, China and Japan are kind of similar in a way, aren't they? I don't know, but. I think like cultural lines are probably still quite different as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Don't worry, soldier, we will. Just keep those Oh, I can imagine someone in the mod progress took all the took this entire map and changed the vehicle into something else. <laughs> or made a mercenaries map in this. <laughs> imagine that, you're fighting mercenaries on the road and one of the obstacles is a car you have to avoid. <laughs> And usually when you get those little zigzag turns, it's best to stay in the middle. Like when it goes right and then left again. Right, this bit we're going to run on the train tracks actually because she tosses a grenade. Now here's the thing, the train here, if you run into that train, it counts as a game over because you collide with it. But here I'm going to make, I'm going to scare Steven a bit. You're going to scare him? Yeah, watch what I do here. Oh shit! <laughs> I recall in the recording after we stopped recording us, he he looked at me with a blank face actually and said, "Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that." Because from his perspective, he can't do anything. I'm the one driving the vehicle. <laughs> I always do that just to make him tense, <laughs> like stay on that train and then turn at the last second. <laughs> Mind you, there's been a few times where I failed. As a and this is something I did not realize until this recording. If you press the R3, you can turn the headlights on and off. So previously you used to like just drive about in the darkness? Yeah, because I thought I... Well, no, the headlights <laughs> would still be on. I did not realise you could turn them off. Ah, okay. Ah, but there's this... This next bit is actual bullshit. This next bit, because the amount of enemies they throw at you and the... The shit they expect you to do. The point is, is that... Chris, Steven is still on that machine gun. I have to get my sniper rifle and look and see how the health is going down because the amount of machine guns firing at us. This bit is right. Absolute bullshit. <laughs> And there's a BSA emblem right there. If you're brave enough to get that. Oh, you can't accept. You can't exit the vehicle. You're stuck here. So I mean, look, we're already down at red. Funny story, actually. This one thing happened where we got to this <coughs> bit right here. We were only a pixel of health, right? And then I'm turning around this junction in this car park. I accidentally hit the wall with a slight tip, and I explode. <laughs> <laughs> you survive all that, but as soon as, uh, you set, as, soon as I hit that wall, boof. <laughs> <laughs> Steven acknowledging what I'm doing. Now here's a little another funny story actually in this particular section right here. Hey, we're swapping so, we're swapping wheel. roles now, but there's been a few occasions where a glitch will happen, right? Where Chris's model does not move, and then the car will start driving itself. Okay. <laughs> like the gear shift will move, but it's on its own, and it goes off on its own, and then Pierce and Chris are clipping for each other on the turret. <laughs> <laughs> So is that just like happen on random occasions? On random occasions, yeah. If you, if you have bad Wi-Fi, your Chris, the counter one will stay there and the car will drive itself. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like Dexter's Laboratory. That Remember that one where DD becomes a car? Oh, I remember that episode. <laughs> that was weird. It's just like that. When I, that's what I thought when I, whenever every time it happens. I'm like, it's Dexter's Laboratory where the car drives itself. Remember the uh, Dex, Dexter episodes where... Um, like the DD keeps beating Dexter at a fighting game, and then like uh, Dexter ends up get, getting like put in the game itself. 
Oh, I don't remember that one. I do remember there was that <coughs> one where he cheats in the arcade with the pin-up thing. Oh, yeah, and he's at like a Chuck E. Cheese or something uh, like that. And then the bosses have, and it gets the bosses' attention. Mm -hmm. And also what we saw there is um, for Steven, actually, because it's now Steven's turn to drive the car. But because of these crests, he decides to punch the windscreen off. <laughs> <coughs> uh, to give Steven credit, again, this is a moment where anything can happen because you don't know what's going to hit you or what you're going to hit in terms of these driving segments like that right there. That could have easily got hit us and consume the health that we are right now. I'll give Steven credit for driving in this particular section. He drew, he drove very well. Because usually when we get, because most of the time, nine times out of ten when we get here, we usually die because of the amount of health we have. And it doesn't refill when it goes to the next checkpoint. It only refills when you die. <coughs> yeah, this is dull. Why is this car chasing my Resident Evil game? So we're now heading towards an, uh, another behind her where it's a, there's a big cruise there. And it's something to do with Ada's plan. At this point I was really worried in case we would get to the very end and then die at the last minute. But then, as you see here, we don't. So, well done Steven. Very great, very oh, awesome driving. Too bad about that crash though. <laughs> At least it wasn't Leon that was driving it. Aye, or Cole Phelps. <laughs> <laughs> now that is the end of chapter 3, so we're now heading to chapter 4. Chapter 4. We're now on a giant cruise ship. And this is where we're introduced <laughs> to the Neo Umbrella variety of Joabo. Oh, what is that? That's a Neo Umbrella Joabo. I'm good, Captain. The round, the ones where the they usually ha it's just stronger variations of say the Citizen Juavo back in China. Now and they have these masks. I'm guessing these masks help them with night vision or something like that. But there's a lot of snipers here, so this is and this is where you get your semi-automatic sniper rifle. But like Michael Bay in Michael Bay's contract, there's a lot of red barrels, so just shoot them. Jeez, easy come, easy go. And there's two bit different masks actually. The ones with red are the they default, the the Goombas, basically. And the ones with the yellow ones will have mutations. Oh, okay. So they're more the Koopa Troopers to the game. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Free ammunition if you need it. Then again, if you were playing on with Infinite Army, you'd be like, nah. I still don't understand why the skill points are chess pieces though. <laughs> I'm going to make the biggest chessboard ever. Jerry's going to come around and challenge you then. <laughs> I love how he was like playing with himself. For, like, okay, like, please rephrase that, Colin. <laughs> you know what I meant. <laughs> Stop it with the innuendo. I, I didn't even intend that as an innuendo. <laughs> well, Jerry was playing against himself, should I say? Yeah. We have to figure out where on board she's hiding. Oh my god, Colin. <laughs> I don't even mean that as an innuendo, I swear. <laughs> you won't be able to watch Jerry's game the same way again. I uh, now that you've just said that, it's never got <laughs> what has been heard cannot be unheard. He just sits there with that smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> These false teeth. <laughs> now that was... Oh, here's another mutation. Oh, these are the, the blow-pop ones that explode the moment they're next to you. But the way to defeat them is just go for the knees. Once, you once they're on the knees, they'll self-destruct. Or just na dash into them. Nice. But if you're caught in that radius, it's a lot of damage. Yeah. <clears throat> But I honestly thought they would have a secondary attack, actually, because usually when you look at the game design and how they mutate, it's like jaws coming together and they clunch together. Mm -hmm. But I would thought one of their attacks would be where they would walk up to you, right, and then they'll bite you or something like that when they're close to you. Kind of like the um, Duvalia and Resident Evil 5, if you remember. Mm -hmm. The ones that where the entire torso becomes cut in half and they become like crab things. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, unlike the Plaga, these do not die with a flash grenade. And that one, there's a beetle head actually there. That yellow one there. 
if that what that does is it gets close to you and then it does a dash attack where if it bites you and then it lifts you up into the air and if you fail a QTE it does high damage where it claps itself together. But that combined and, and if you recall the um the mutation where it grows an arm and it pulls you over a cover, mm -hmm. combine that with the beetle head and it's very deadly because once it grabs you it pulls you into its beetle mouth. Mm. Reminds me of a stag beetle. I think that's what the what's based off actually. Because obviously some of the designs are come have to come from somewhere like the Strelats is basically a lizard. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, and there's another cocoon hatching. Now Ada right here has gone through that door, but now there's two there's two barriers blocking that door, so we have to go two separate ways to get one door open and then another one to get the other second done. <clears throat> now you can see the Cress has calmed down now. He's no longer a douche. <laughs> is he eating his Snickers? <laughs> <laughs> you're not you when you're hungry. Okay. Eat, Eat a Snickers. Snickers. <laughs> That's what Pierce should have done at the beginning. <laughs> like he goes for a snack bar and he's like, here, there's a Snickers. Captain, here, have this. <laughs> better? Better. <laughs> hey, Pierce, I found something to take care of that bulkhead. So now we have to use that missile to get rid of the bulkhead that's blocking the door. But the thing is, is that we're going to be separated on opposite sides of this of this panel, and we have to get to where that missile is. So from Ste Steven's perspective, this pathway is exactly the same, only it's mirrored. Okay. So he'll be dealing with Joabo from his side, actually. Oh, what's also unique about these Joabo, actually, see the masks, actually? They actually have a tube, which sometimes they can activate that tube, and it automatically trans causes them to transform and mutate without the need to lose, like, without damage. But again, it's very rare, but you will see the tube coming out of their shoulder to stab them and then mutate. It's annoying, though, when you, want, you think you've got a hedge on and these things mutate. The weak spot actually for these is in the is in the core of its of the light itself, but sometimes it's just best just to waste as many bullets as you can. Because the countering to counter that dash attack they do, it's really, really finicky. Like it's it's like millisecond and all that. I say that as I miss my counter <laughs> twice. So <laughs> I was wondering that like you're missing. Yeah. It's because the it's because of the model and all that. And the, and the thing is that you can't spam these melee moves that are timed and limited and all that. Now, once we get to this missile, Steven's gonna have to um, monkey swing across this bar, but if he gets too much damage, it's a bot, it's a long drop. So if he fails this, it's a, it's a death. So I have to protect him until he gets to next to me. And the snipers all the way over there too. <clears throat> Again, you can tell by the green laser sight. I don't know if there's been a time where I actually let Steven climb all the way in and I just shot him with the grenade. <laughs> Again, just being a dick to him. I don't know if it's satisfying when you counter the, the mask and then the, the mask just shatters. Uh, we can destroy the cocoon in time. It's hatching. Oh, no. All right, once it's once it's hatching, it's got invincibility frames. So you have to wait till the animation finishes, then shoot it. The weak spot from the pad is on its back, actually. But as like obviously the weak spot is its flesh, but the 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 major weak spot is the white spot on its back. Mm -hmm. So as long as you got some flesh out of it, you can just shoot whatever you want. Right, what Steven has to do now is tilt the missile in one direction to make sure it's facing the bulkhead and he has to hold it in that position where I have to fill it with some <coughs> QTEs to get the wires sorted. And now he's going to give me a hug. <laughs> You've had too many Snickers. <laughs> now that's how you open a door. Now, now that we've destroyed the bulkhead, we now have to find a way to get the power back on so we can open the door. Oh my god, I just thought of something. What? Like, instead of, like, instead of the Snickers, imagine, like, the reason why Chris was angry was because, you know, in that Ed and Ed episode where Ed's at the woods because he's got a pebble in his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's pathetic for Chris if he ended up having that stuff his shirt. <laughs> Oh, wait, where have you? <laughs> <laughs> he 
he's sitting in the park like by himself. Uh, like. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, but you have to admit when Ed is pissed off, he looks he's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, shotgun in the boys causes him to mutate. <laughs> Wonder if this is where all they get on the military is concerned. There's a, yeah, there's an aircraft carrier, then there's tanks all over the place, and there's V O what you call them V T O Ls, something like that. I uh, don't know. <clears throat> and I have no idea what that flag is for. Actually, it could be the cap. It could be the um, I'm guessing the umbrella hijacked this cruiser before. From some other military before they claimed it as their own. Again, the, the game doesn't explain. It's just magically here. Yeah. <clears throat> An excuse to have a level design. <laughs> Sniper rifle? Grenade launcher. <laughs> <laughs> then again, if I've already got 30 shells in my. I've got 30 grenade shells in my inventory, I might as well use them. Obviously, the grenade launcher is the most powerful weapon. Well, next to the rocket launcher, but you only get the rocket launcher in the end of Leon's campaign. <laughs> yes, you don't even get to unlock an infinite rocket launcher like the previous two games. Wow, what a shoulder dash. Missed terribly. <laughs> so, see what I mean? These mutations are completely run. Oh, there's that long arm thing that. Uh, yeah. It could have grabbed Steven there. And there's the combination I was talking about earlier. Get that stuck in there. They're a deadly combination. You might as well just get rid of them straight away. <laughs> Again, that's one of Pierce's high melee combos. You know, for a game that really encourages you to use the guns and all, you really are using a lot of melee moves. <laughs> Ah, uh, Steven loves using that knife. Right, as we move on to the, through the store, we'll see you in the next part, folks.